Dragon Age 2 was rated M for Mature by the ESRB and contains blood and gore, language, sexual content, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, my name is Emeronith and I play games for the internet. Today we're playing Dragon Age 2. Last time we finished the Legacy DLC for the game. And I figure that's a good time as any to do a little codex reading. Starting with Creatures, Carta Bronto. Sent for more Brontos from Orzammar today. We lost two in a landslide and they were carrying full loads of silver and iron. Those responsible have been flogged. The creatures are useful underground in wide tunnels, but not so sure-footed on the mountain passes. And bringing them to the surface in daylight is always a catastrophe waiting to happen. They're spooked by every sign of movement, and once riled up, they'll charge just about every anything in sight. Bah! Must investigate the possibility of using more even-tempered beast. Donkeys, perhaps? Humans swear by them. From the Journal of Radigan, reader of the Carta and Kirkwall. Deepstalker. One of the few natural narn non-darkspawn creatures to live in the deep roads. A deep stalker is a reptilian cave dweller known for burrowing into the stone paths of the deep roads and ambushing prey, usually nugs. They hunt in packs, attacking with round mouths full of serrated teeth or spitting poison from venom glands. Although a single deep stalker poses little threat to any experienced explorer, packs can be quite lethal. Genlock. The Genlock is the most common darkspawn in the underground. They are tough, stocky, and notoriously difficult to kill, since many show at least some resistance to, ma resistance to magic. They are creatures of darkness with keen senses and an intuitive understanding of the deep places that allow them to take even groups of seasoned warriors by surprise. Genlocks, eh, Genlocks are what make tra traversing the deep roads so dangerous. A group of the creatures can easily overwhelm and mercilessly slaughter a small party within minutes. Genlock alphas are stronger and more physically intimidating than most genlocks. They are known for bullying other genlocks into doing their bidding. Herlock Alpha The Herlock Alpha is more intelligent than the alphas of other darkspawn types. Usually armed with a large, vicious weapon, they have been known to act as commanders on the battlefield directing and controlling the lesser darkspawn in their strange, brutish way. And Farterol. In the days before Arlathan, there was a city in the mountains beloved by the Durthamin, keeper of, beloved by Durthamin, keeper of secrets. Its people were wise beyond measure, thanks to his counsel, and the city flourished. Then a high dragon settled in the mountains, and her hunger threatened the city. The elders cried out to Durthamin for the protection as the dragon's rampage struck ever closer, and for three days and nights the people shut themselves in their homes and watched the skies in dread. On the fourth day, Durthamin heard them. He whispered into the mountains and the fallen trees of the forest gathered, shaping an immense and agile spider-like beast. It was the Varteral. With lightning speed, vicious strikes, and venomous spit, it drove back the serpent, from then on, it was the guardian of the city and its people. Many years passed, the gods were trapped by Fen'Harel, and the people left to gather in Arlathan, but the Varteral kept its everlasting vigil, guarding Durthamin's city as it eventually crumbled to dust. To this day, it stands there, watching over the rubble. Any travelers foolish enough to wander there find themselves face to face with the Wrath Incarnate. From the tale of the Varteral, as told by Gisharel, Keeper of the Relifarin clan of the Dalish Elves. Items. The key. The key is, and always will be, part of the cage that holds Corypheus. The prison's power is tied to that of the key. As the power becomes as the power of one waxes, the other wanes. The key's origins are lost to time. All we know is that it is an, it is an ancient, powerful weapon. The Wardens of Old uncovered a few of its secrets, just enough to draw upon its magic to create the seals that hold Corypheus. Accounts indicate that the key attunes itself to whichever man or woman wields it in the rituals that reinforces Corypheus's chains. It is the nature of the magic, something in the blood. The key is currently attuned to one Malcolm Hawk, 
the last mage to hold it. The key is an essential part of strengthening the seals, and also the only thing that can break Corypheus free, from Janeka's research notes. Regalia of Isopt. The Vimark Mountains are impassable, save for a few little-known ca caravan routes. Most travelers who need to cross the range sail along the coast instead. This makes the central Vimarks remarkably isolated, perfect to conceal so significant a secret. Once construction of the prison commences, I recommend we spread word that our new outpost is both to guard the pass and to establish a greater, greater war Grey Warden presence in the Free Marches. If I may, may be so bold, I would also like to volunteer to be one of the Wardens sent to the Vimark. I hope you will consider my request. From a report by Margaret, Senior Grey Wardens to the First, gray, first Warden at Weisopt. Shield of the Knight herself. A shield of impressive weight to the point of being unwieldy if held by a weak hand. The crest is Dalish in Old Orlesian, and the direct and deliberate styling can be a reference to only one person, the legendary Sir Aveline, the first woman to gain Orlesian knighthood. Abandoned as a baby, Aveline was raised by the Dalish and grew into a skilled warrior. Her elven parents encouraged Aveline to demonstrate her skill among her human kin, but women were not allowed to enter Orlesian knighthood or compete in tournaments. She entered anyway, her features obscured by armor. Aveline defeated everyone she faced. Her final victory came to a brutal end when Cavella, uh, sorry, Caleva, a knight in service to the Emperor, tripped Aveline out of frustration, knocking the helm from her head. Realizing that his honor had been bested by a woman, Caleva demanded that the competition be nullified. Jeered by the crowd, he lashed out and killed the fallen Aveline. Prince Freyan had also faced Aveline in the tournament and saw her death as a great injustice. When Freyan became emperor in 744 Storm, he formally recognized her skill by abolishing the practices that had excluded her. She was posthumously knighted, while women are still a rare and while women are still a rarity in the Orlesian knighthood, those who enter revere Sir Aveline as their patron. Sir Aveline's career was short. It's simply impossible for her to have held all the equipment that had been attributed to her over the years, but this shield is still of exceptional quality, and Aveline may find its attribution to her namesake of interest. Helm of Weishaupt The Labyrinth has claimed Warden Commander Aster. Earl Ulrich tampered with one of the magical seals in this place and unwittingly released a demon upon us. Commander Aster ordered us to run. He would hold the creature back while we activated the prison's defenses, trapping them both. The barriers came up, and they will stay up. This was Commander Aster's last instruction, and we will follow it to the letter. We are unable to retrieve the Warden Commander's prized helm and the other trappings of his office. They will not be returned to Weishaupt, and will remain with the Commander, wherever he may be. From a tor green, torn Grey Warden report, the writing barely legible. Places. The Warden's Prison. The Grey Warden's Prison in the Vimark Mountains is believed to have been constructed more than a thousand years ago. The original method of construction has been lost to history, but the Warden Commanders of the Free Marches have maintained the prison secret through the centuries. The prison is concealed in a great rift in the rift in the Bimark Mountains, far from any easily traveled mountain passes. The wardens themselves have spread rumors of banditry and beasts to prevent explorers from approaching. The prison consists of a central tower built into the rift with magically maintained bridges, allowing access at different levels. Each level is sealed by a blood magic ritual, which, in which a mage of untainted blood uses his life essence to create a magical barrier that is permeable from the outside, yet impenetrable from within. This one-way access has caused other darkspawn, and perhaps unwary travelers, to be caught within the prison's confines. Those who disappear inside never re-emerge. Lore Amgiforn the Waste Yard You who must serve beneath the empty sky, you who stand between the poison and the stone, 
The ancestors will remember when all others have forgotten your name. Remember your oath. It must endure even beyond death itself. Be vigilant. If the, pestil if the pestilent one awakens, you will know it by these signs. The air will fill with the scent of putrefaction. You will hear a sound like the cadence of drums. Like the cadence of drums. Sorry. Malvernus, the Defiler, will try to weaken your will and compel you to bear the orb out of Amgiforn, but you must hold fast. This is the sacred duty that cannot for be forsworn, lest the stone fall to poison and death. Amgiforn, the Lonely Vigil One watcher each generation will be chosen from the warrior caste. He will stand guard until his death. Only the constant vigilance of the stone's children can keep the foulness of Malvernus at bay. This bur the, the burden of living in exile beneath the sun is terrible, but this sacrifice, this Amgiforn, will ensure the sanctity of the stone forever. Balos Atredum, by decree of Paragon Iona. Iona. Ilona. Hmm. Amgiforn the Foul. We called it Malvernus, the Pestilent One. It devoured tigues, turning our fairest work into a noxious waste. It consumed living warriors, turning their bodies to slime, and when its hunger was not abated, it consumed the bones of our ancestors. Foulness came from its touch, poison and filth and desecration. It threatened even the stone itself. The shapers br bound it, chained in larium, stained with the blood of a hundred warriors, but with within the orb it hungered, it waited. We carried it here to the wasteland of the surface, where it can threaten nothing of value. The stone will live. The stone must live. We have sworn to defend it from the foul one at any price. Dumont, the Dragon of Silence Dumont was the most powerful of the old gods, known as the Dragon of Silence for the vows of silence undertaken by his acolytes. Chantry lore claims it was he who taught the first magister, Archon Thalson, Thalcian, the powers of blood magic. It was Dumont's followers who are believed to have entered the Golden City, thereby corrupting it with their presence. Modern scholars question whether the old gods were truly gods, or whether they were merely a more advanced species of high dragon, perhaps possibly capable of magic or speech, that were worshipped by the ancient Deventers. Whether the truth of his history, Dumont was also the first of the imprisoned old gods to have been discovered by the Darkspawn, and thus transformed into the first archdemon, the monstrous force behind the first blight. From Tales of the Destruction of Thetis by Brother Genitivi, Chantry Scholar. The First Darkspawn Those who have been cast down, the demons who would be gods, began to whisper to men from their tombs within the earth. And the men of Deventer heard and raised altars to the pretender gods once more, and in return were given in hushed whispers the secrets of the of darkest magic. But it was not worship the false gods craved. They urged the magisters to ever greater depravity, rewarding them with power and more. Arrogance became a great caged beast in the lands of Deventer, an emptiness that consumed all and could never be filled. To satisfy its hunger, the mage lords at the goading of their gods assaulted the golden city, heart of all creation, to take the maker's power for themselves. With magic born of mingled blood and lyrium, the Tevinter broke into the maker's home, the maker's house, but the promised power did not await them there. The moment they entered the city of the maker, their sin poisoned it. What had been golden turned black, and violently were they flung from the world of dreams back into the waking world twisted and corrupted by their crime and their magic into monsters. They fled underground, unable to bear the light of day. The first darkspawn. Thernades 8, 21 through 27, The Canticle of Transfigurations. The Enigma of Kirkwall. Ancient of lore is hard to come by, but there's history to be had here in Kirkwall. The city once home to the Imperium's slave trade, what answers does Kirkwall hold? Why look here instead of Paravantium or Valdorma? The Imperium does not give up its secrets easily. Even with the Magister's centuries dead, our journey is perilous. Here on the docks of the gallows we renew our vows. And should we fail, search for the markings of the Band of Three. 
a tattered letter found under a cobblestone. It has curious markings and is signed the Band of Three. The Viscount is suspicious, but the bribe was sufficient to gain access to the restricted section of the archives. The money would have been better spent elsewhere, the archives being almost devoid of Imperium-era records. When the slaves revolted, they hunted magisters and burned the city, at least the parts that could be burned. One account says that the streets were littered with piles of scrolls and books set aflame. Is our quest futile? Did the slaves destroy the answer? As Maffarath's armies toppled the Imperium, they sent three magisters and their legions here. They never arrived. But why march here, of all places? What were they coming here for? Behind a panel with curious markings, signed the Band of Three. It is as we thought. The quarries of Kirkwall were found after the city was sacked by the Imperium and after they started constructing the city. The Imperium found the mineral wealth, not the indigenous people. The histories gave, give conflicting accounts on who lived here before the Imperium. Some say the Alamari, others say the Daedfet, the Daefads. We do know it was a barbarian people who had little need of the metals in the hills. So why did the Imperium come here in such force? It is hard to disprove Brother Mikkel's theory that the na natural harbor would be important for their armies, but magisters ruled, not common men. What barrier would a simple sea pose to them? The wars with the Alamari wouldn't start until centuries later. Each clue we find only leads to more questions, but we will not give up. Underneath a pile of small boulders, carved with curious markings and signed the Band of Three. In the back alleys of Low Town, you can find extraordinary things. Priceless tomes of knowledge can be bought with a handful of gold. The chant of Archon Levias, a whole chapter of the Midnight Compendium. Some of these books were thought lost forever. And these are no forgeries. I've verified their authenticity myself. The fences have no inkling of what they're selling, that what they're selling has value. Where did these books come from? After several failed attempts, I got my answer underneath the city. There is a hive of hidden passages in Kirkwall's sewers. Now and then, a lucky sewer rat comes across an unlooted chamber, and then a cache of ancient Tevinter relics spread through the black market. We must search below the city, underneath a cobblestone with curious markings faintly glowing. It is signed the Band of Three. A maze of caves, sewers, and hidden passages. We found three Tevinter chambers already looted, but today, tonight, we found one closed. It was sm a small cell containing a few trinkets and a common tome, but it symbolizes hope. The magister had, had hundreds of m meh. the magisters had hundreds of mages deep below Kirkwall. They lived and researched here, far from the scrutiny of common men. Many ancient cities specialized in arcane research, but why did Kirkwall hide its efforts here? Why go to such great pains to keep it out of sight? Were they a cabal of renegade magisters, or was? This a special place of the Archon, hidden in a small fissure near curious markings and signed the Band of Three. Ironically, the Chantry has the best records on the Imperium occupation that we've found. None of the forbidden texts, which have undoubtedly been destroyed, but many administrative records. In their cold, numbered rows, misery is told. Thousands of slaves pass through the gallows to work, the, the mines are to be shipped elsewhere. The list of elven children is numbing. Three maimed, two mute, and four serviceable. These numbers don't add up. For every thousand slaves that came to Kirkwall, a hundred disappeared. I checked the tax rolls as well, and the discrepancy exists there, too, if one has the wit to see it. Two hundred three slaves went missing in the Imperium's three hundred twelfth year. That's just one year. Other records showed similar discrepancies. Over centuries, practically a whole civilization of slaves simply disappeared hidden inside the cover of a book with curious markings and signed the Band of Three. After pursuing another dead end, we were attacked by Maleficarum. I fear V will not make it. The fences must have tipped them off. Are they cultists, trying to protect the answer? Are they after it themselves? Or was it a random attack? The mages of Kirkwall have had a more troubled history than those of in other circles. A greater percentage of them do not survive the harrowing, and a greater percentage turn to blood magic. Almost double that of Starkhaven or Ostwick. Is there a secret fraternity delving into t Vinter secrets of this city? Either way, we must be more careful, lest we become band of one, the band of one, or none. Hidden under the co 
cobblestone with the curious markings and signed the band of three. Forbidden Knowledge Tyrone's tune Tyrone's Book of Blood was Dabon Height one mage or a full cabal? I found another reference to Zenop Zebenkek in his black journal. The blood feeds, the blood nourishes, in blood the call is heard, in blood the deal is made. My master bathed in a river of blood, then the great Zebenkek came. Tyrone's beginning. In four two black is the oldest account of the Forbidden Ones, though most mages consider them a hoax. But someone had to make the first deal, the first contact with the other side, from an un the unknown mage's account. The first magus cast themselves into the fade in the search of answers and power, always power. They found the Forbidden Ones, Zebenkek, Imshael, Gaxkang the Unbound, and the Formless One. Many conversations were had and much of the fabric of the world revealed, and thus the magic of blood was born. Even those who consider this folly dare not utter these names. Didn't we fight? Gaxkang the Unbound? Or Faria did? I don't remember. Sorry. Tyrone's Beginnings 2. Inside the Grimoire's pages were such secrets a mage's rightful place is not under the heel of the Templars. We are masters of the elements. We call forth the spirits themselves. As far as we have advanced, the ancient of Intermagis uh, mages knew so much more. And even they were only starting their journey to understand the nature of our world. We were never meant to walk among mortal men. We were meant to command them. One. Oofa. Letters and notes. Scouts report. My team was sent to evaluate the fortified structures that overlook the northern caravan routes in the Vimark Mountains. The Viscount's library suggests the buildings are part of an ancient Grey Warden fortress constructed to guard the pass, but abandoned after the Free Marches gained independence from Tevinter. Sorry, it's getting too warm. Our examination revealed construction that is remarkably sturdy for its age. The fortress's foundations reach deeper into the rock than expected. Two levels below the surface, we discovered a series of twisting underground passages, chiseled out of the mountain itself. I commanded the men to step up, the, set up camp there. Not an hour later, one of the newer men reported voices from the depths. He flew into a frenzy, demanding that we leave immediately. Those unused to tight spaces often display such hysteria. Thankfully, I was able to calm him before his raving affected the rest of the team. But he was gone this morning. Tracks lead deeper into the, ca the caverns. We shall follow him, from a scout's report, apparently quite old. Locks within locks. The wardens set a trap for Corypheus and bound him in a prison of their own making. Beneath the free marches, they carved out a series of caverns, a veritable maze, and enchanted them, wards within wards, locks within locks, spells woven with the help of a powerful artifact they called the Key. All this to hold Corypheus. It seems e that even that wasn't enough. Warden Commander Rhiannon writes in her private journals, Corypheus is too powerful. Nothing will hold him forever. The seals are already weakening. We must find a way to fortify them, and soon, from Janeka's research notes. A change of course. I was wrong. We cannot control the creature Corypheus. Even our most powerful mages hold no influence with him. In truth, it is they who have been most vulnerable. A dozen times, those aligned, uh, assigned to guard or study the creature have sought the key to free him. And when they are removed to a safe distance, they remember little. They speak of a voice in their minds, a calling like that of the old gods. But it wanes outside of Corypheus, outside Corypheus's presence. Darkspawn have attacked as well, seeking him. I can only assume they are summoned the same way. Somehow his magic lets him speak through the blight itself. 
affecting any who bear its taint. This, is the sa this same power stays the hand of any warden who approaches to kill him. I must recommend that we seal this prison over and conceal its very existence. Corypheus must not be allowed to go free. From Warden Commander Daniken, the first Grey Warden, to the first Warden in Weishaupt, 1014 TE. To capture the Hawk. We have learned Bethany Hawk is with the Grey Wardens. Search all of the free marches if you must, but find her. Kill whoever gets in your way, but make sure the girl is unharmed. The blood of Malcolm Hawk must remain pure. The Great One demands this of you. In the name of the Master Corypheus, may he see sunlight again. Praise Corypheus. Like many of you, I was once a thieving wretch. I was a servant to coin in my own base desires. And that is when I heard his call. Corypheus opened my eyes, just as he has opened yours, and he showed me what is true. What is the card of side Corypheus? Nothing but dust and ashes. Only Corypheus is eternal. We are his hands and his eyes on the surface. We are the ones he honored with his trust to dig him from his prison in the deep roads. When Corypheus steps into the sunlight, we will be rewarded. Praise him. Praise Corypheus. From a scratch of par parchment, evidently notes for a speech. The Great One's Key. The Wardens did not guard the key with care. It was left in a repository with objects of little worth. Trinkets. Dusty Grey Warden trophies. Not even a guard posted. Fools. If only they knew what they had, and had lost. It will not wake at my touch. It sleeps and its power remains within. The Great One says it requires Malcolm Hawk's blood to awaken it. Only then can its power set him free. I will find the heir to the blood, of the, and the Great One will reward me. Yes, let it be soon. From the Journal of Radigan, leader of the Carta and Kirkwall. First Legionnaire's Journal. It's ironic. Hearing of Tethris Garan's crime first gave me the courage to confess my own and join the Legion of the Dead. Knowing that a paragon's son could give in to the same base passions as a mere merchant, commit a murder even more f even fouler than mine. Yet he was sentenced to die in the deep roads for murdering his sister, not even offered the chance at the Legion. I am grateful every day for what the Legion gave me, a family, a purpose, and my name is clear. So when the Paragon learned that the Carta was responsible for the murder and not his son, I was the first to volunteer to retrieve the Prince. It's not right that he should be the only one who doesn't know he's been exonerated. From the Journal of Malv Haren, Legion of the Dead. Second Legionnaire's Journal. Paragon Garen refuses to give up. We're the 8th Legion unit he sent after Tethris in the past five years. None dare tell him that after so long alone in the deep roads, Tethris certainly is dead. S is certainly dead. The Paragon insists he will see his heir restored to his rightful place. May the ancestors favor his cause. We've followed the paths of the other Legionnaires, and so far we seem to be on the right trail. We're in a section of the deep roads that appear to have been altered by human magic, so perhaps we'll find a new some new clue here. We're going in tomorrow. Ancestors be with us. From the Journal of Carla Zaratak, Legion of the Dead. Third Legionnaire's Journal. This place is cursed. For ten years, Paragon Garen has been sending Legionnaires to search out our lost heir. Now I know what's become of them. There is no way out. This is no normal part of the Deep Roads. There's lyrium worked into the walls, into the stone itself, some kind of human magic. From out the outside, it looks like just another tunnel, but walk in and it's a prison. There is no way past the barriers, no way forward, no way back. But the trap remains open to every beast, darkspawn, and dwarf that wanders in. My brothers in the Legion have died, and I have done my best to lay their spirits to rest in the stone. I am the last. There will be no one to do the same for me or for Tethras if he was too... If he too was snared by this noose. For you, my prince, I wish you to the stone's blessing. A trust Tuncha. Tatarnia. Amgitol. Tavash. Iduk. God, why was it so hard to say? May someone recite the ritual words over your bones and return your spirit to the stone. From the journal of Bashath. Bashath Garen, Legion of the Dead. Malcolm Hawk's reply. 
Warden Commander Lyra Larius, I have been considering your offer, and I accept your terms. In addition to what was discussed, I find payment of 25 sovereigns per seal to be su sufficient. All I require from you is your promise that my wife will be kept safe while I am gone, and that Lord Aristide Amel will be convinced to let Le Leandra leave Kirkwall with me when I return. I wish for my bride and I to be free, and I do not intend to have her father's men hunting us down. Before we depart, I would also like to confirm your statement that the ritual does not require contact with demonic influences. I would also like to discuss this dark spawn of magical talents in greater detail. It quite defies belief that the Grey Wardens have kept a secret of this magnitude buried so close to Kirkwall. I await your reply, Malcolm Hawk. Privileged to the Wardens. All we hear is that this is one of the great Grey Warden secrets. It must be protected at all costs. As usual, we are most concerned with deceiving our own people. But why hide that the Deep Roads were shaped not only by d dwarves, but also by us? I found records dating back to 1004 TE, the wake of the First Blight. Early Wardens discovered that some Darkspawn could think and speak, and commanded portions of the Horde even after the Archdemon's death. A few could wield magic with the skill of a Tevinter Magister, and the Wardens greatly feared them. It was here, in the Vimark Mountains, that Warden Sashamiri Sush set her trap to capture and study the greatest of these creatures, the one whom they called Corypheus, from Janeka's research notes. Sir Alaric's Letter To Her Excellency, Divine Justinia, I am well aware both you and Knight Commander Meredith have rejected my proposal, but I beg you to reconsider. The mages and the free marches are past controlling, their numbers have doubled in three years, and they have found a way to plant their abominations in our ranks. They cannot be contained. The tranquil solution is our answer. All mages at the age of majority must be made tranquil. They will coexist peacefully, retain their usefulness, a perfect strategy. It's simply the best way to ensure mages obey the laws of men and maker. I remain, as always, your obedient servant, Sir Otto Alaric. Speculations on Kirkwall. The records say Corypheus has been trapped below the Vimark since the days of the Tevinter Imperium. Can it be a coincidence that the Darkspawn besieged this area more fiercely than anyone else on the surface of Thetis? Or that Kirkwall, the closest city, suffers from endless plagues of violence, lunacy, human sacrifice, and blood magic? If one studies Kirkwall's public records, it becomes hard to deny that some malevolent force has long shaped its history. Could a darkspawn, even a powerful mage, have such influence even as it slumbers? From a weather journal bearing the Grey Warden's seal. And that's that for... Uh, codex entries. Oof. And with that, uh, I'll cut it off here. Um... And I will see you next time when we continue our adventure. But until then, stay safe. Uh, take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time. But until then, bye-bye.